all you big, beautiful brains out there. Today, we're going to talk about crystallized and fluid intelligence. Before we get started, take a minute to subscribe to Psy vs. Psy. Help out your friendly neighborhood psychologist while I tell you all about crystallized and fluid intelligence. Enter the snapback to general intelligence. Theories of multiple intelligences. One theory of multiple intelligences is by a guy named Raymond Cattell. Cattell was a psychologist and even worked for a while with Charles Spearman, the discoverer of general intelligence. But honestly, Cattell was into some pretty sketchy stuff that I won't get into here. And the theory might not even really be his. There's actually some pretty compelling evidence that this whole concept came from another psychologist named Donald Hebb. But really, what's important here is the concept, not the person. The concept is that intelligence wasn't all just one big thing lumped together. Instead, there are two different kinds of intelligence, crystallized and fluid. Crystallized intelligence is the things that you know, remembering facts. It is concrete, acquired knowledge, things that you've learned. If I were to test your crystallized intelligence, it would be a lot like the standardized tests that you're used to, like spelling tests or a history test, or even the most widely known crystallized intelligence test here in the US, the SAT. The SAT looks at information that you already know, things you've already figured out. Fluid intelligence is how you think abstractly, how you problem solve. So, when you're faced with something to do, can you figure out how to do it? If I was to test your fluid intelligence, I would need to look at some different kinds of tests than you're used to. Like, say, a pattern recognition test, where I give you a long string of a repeating pattern of shapes and then ask you which shape comes next. The one all the colleges and university students will know about is the ACT. The ACT measures not what you know, but what you can figure out. Where the difference between crystallized and fluid intelligences gets really interesting is when we look at how people's intelligence seems to change in these two domains as we get older. Crystallized intelligence increases with age. So the older you are, the longer you've had to learn, and the more you can rely on what you've already learned. The older you are, the better you do on behavioral tasks associated with crystallized intelligence, like history tests or crossword puzzles. You can use what you know. But fluid intelligence tends to decrease with age. So older people aren't going to do as well on these type of thinking outside what you already know types of challenges. How do we know? Well, a lot of it is thanks to a giant long-term study at the University of Washington called the Seattle Longitudinal Study that's been going on since 1956. Every few years, they bring in the same participants and a few new ones. And one of the things they do is give the participants the same tests year after year to know how their intelligence changes as they age. So when somebody tries to give you flack one day just because you're getting old, tell them you're not old. You just had more time to develop increased crystallized intelligence. <laughs> if you want to improve your crystallized intelligence, Make sure you subscribe to Psy vs. Psy so you can get all of our other videos and you can learn all about the science of psychology. Until next time, keep thinking, and I'll see y'all later. Bye!